are we feeling, Brick Battlers? Bone rattling excited for the new Super Doom Spire update? I sure thought so. This update includes a lot, so let's just get right into it. The things included in this update include the brand new Spooky Staff weapon, which shoots and fires in a straight direction with the skull, and brand new Halloween themed items such as stickers from Jake Cusa, Oct Aliens, and more funny emotes to make the match. However, I think the biggest thing this update was nerfs. A completely different make way for game modes and new maps. The coolest thing this update I will reveal is later in the video. There is also a brand new map for infection. Polly surely came through in this update. As well, the soundtrack maker Zemul, please check her out on SoundCloud, who also made a new jungle soundtrack. This sub announcement came out as leak after months of hiatus from Polyhex, who in the latest episode of Update Review, they said they needed a break. They did so after working on the update for months, and so that's why the server was archived and sticker sheets were moved. Luckily, I was one of the content creators who got access to testing and I am very fortunate for it. New weapons include like the bow, the jack-o'-lantern, and more make this update surely a spooky one. I'll be reviewing these weapons in today's video as well as reviewing the changelog and giving my thoughts on them. Let's get started. My name is Tuki Alex and this is our Super Doom Spire series, our 14th episode. Yo, what's up, Hush Junior Squad, and welcome back to another video. Before we get started in this video, make sure to subscribe for this Roblox drama, news, tips and tricks, and more. Before we also get started in this video, I'm going to leak a little funny cone. Rattle me bones for the skeleton point plus laugh in 500 crowns, so yippee. That's right, folks. Rattle me bones, all caps, for a skeleton sticker in 500 crowns. That should be a nice treat for you. Please be sure to subscribe, so that way we reach 6k subscribers. We are so close. That would be a nice Halloween treat for me. No tricks, I care about you all. The organization of this video will firstly be reviewing the new weapons, then I'll be going through the changelog of the video. Let's get started with our weapon review. First off, our brand new weapons. Most weapons, however, are reskins with a twist to be honest. Our first weapon is known as the Spooky Staff. The Spooky Staff, let's go over the stats of this weapon. The Spooky Staff is a reskin of the Hoss Hog. The Hoss Hog is meant for rocket jumping. However, this one comes with a twist, to self burn if you place it wrong. This was new and added, which a lot of players dislike about this weapon in testing. When testing, a lot of players found that it shot skulls in the straight direction, which is cool, and the skulls can fire once depending on every 3 seconds on average. The skulls also have a flame aura to them, depending on which team you're from. This is meant to act as a re of the Hoss Hog, as we mentioned before, so honestly it's alright minus the self burn. I definitely wouldn't say this is my favorite weapon regarding the jump because it honestly feels awkward to use because of its size. Hard to explain, but the Hoss Hog is like right there when it comes to shooting. Most people will use the staff in the downward direction because the skull is on top of the weapon. This is an exclusive launcher and at the time of making this video it is not known how much crowns it will cost. 20% rocket jump, negative 15% reload time, plus 20% rocket speed, does not stagger enemies, negative 15% damage and blast radius and flick self burn. If I were to rate this staff a rating for combat, I would rate it a B minus tier. Definitely not practical for rocket jumping because 5 jumps and your burn burns you out. Usually the round is around 6 for a spooky staff. Next up is the bow. The bow costs 5,000 crowns and is an awesome weapon in terms of rating. This bow, let's go over the stats of it. The bow is simply a bow and arrow. When you click, it will fire an arrow. If the bow hits its target, it will do a 25 damage. When charged, the bowstring will be pulled back by the arrow and the shot will do 50 damage. This ball is similar to the shuriken, they both do around the same uncharged damage and do more damage when charged. Both are also fast. Most players see the difference between the bow faster on average, but the shadow shuriken dealing on more damage on charge. The bow overall shoots straight and can ricochet when aiming on corners we found in testing. It was available for purchase yesterday and has 100 damage when charged. Two hard hits and you can easily take an enemy out. Spectacular choice of weapon, especially for your super ball, because a lot of people will use this to snipe. This may actually be nerfed because of just how good it is. If I were to rate the bow rating for combat, I would say an A. It is good in the sense that it has 100% damage when charged, but no, it cannot stagger enemies, which is an unfortunate downside to this all. Next up is our Lava Ball. Lava Ball has its Halloween reskin as the Jack O' Lantern, which is a very rare item. From the testing, I was able to successfully get footage on how this weapon works. The price isn't confirmed yet, so just be patient and it will come in the setup. 
The lava ball is a ball made of magma with some rocks on the surface. When hit by it, it will deal 30 damage along with burn damage. If it was charged, then the burn time will be 7 seconds. If not, it will only be 4 seconds. The burn buff comes at a price, however. The reload and reload speed has been nerfed, along with its ability to stagger being taken away. It is meant to do fast, steady damage. Good weapon in the sense that it's able to burn enemies and take their health away. Because it's meant for fast shots, it's a good weapon if you are a sharp shooter. Oh, and if you'd like to become a sharp shooter, you can train using aim trainer, which can really help your aim just side note there the burn damage can help enemies gain slower effects to get ko'd easier the burn time as mentioned previously is seven seconds which can knock out 30 percent of your health it's charged however the stagger ability as mentioned previously is taken away so please keep in mind for that if i were to rate the lava ball rating for combat i would rate this an a minus it is good in the sense that it has burn damage and good for quick shots but because it cannot stagger enemies it can be on the download for that in total our reskins include globade which is a sword skin spooky staff hot sock skin Candy Claymore, Great Sword Sin, Pumpkin, Super Ball Skin, Jack O' Lantern, Lava Ball Skin. This update mostly includes reskins, however, the reason I reviewed the Spooky Staff first is because I felt it kind of worked differently with this new um, placement. Let's move on to the commentary of the update logs. Firstly, there is now anti-jump spam. After jumping repeatedly in a short time, your jumps will begin to lose strength. I think this is a change that was really disliked in this update altogether because a lot of people often spam jump. This makes a real change to the game combat and experience. Some changes have also made been how victory is decided in Doom Spirit modes. If the time runs out, the team with the most remaining spawns will win. This is a good change because I often found you would be with others even if you had a different amount of spawns. A lot of people like this change. Doomspire's mode has been decreased to 7 minutes, previously 10 minutes. This change will make rounds a lot quicker. I'm glad that this change because it makes rounds a lot more fast paced, which is what a lot of players stated in Brick Battlers. Bomb jumps now have trails to easier track where enemies are headed, except for Shadow Bomb. This is a good change because then we don't have people bomb jumping and sniping a lot easier, which this was a large problem, and I'm glad Volley fixed that. Increase the amount of time before auto heal kicks in by around 3 seconds. I personally do not like this change as I found auto heal would often save you in chasing. I guess not anymore. Well, I mean, okay. Add a new tower generation layouts. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention there are new statues painting and more adding to the towers. The last time there were around 4 layouts that you had to learn, which I stated in the How to Knock Down Super Doom Spires fast video. There are around 6 now, which I believe is great. The markers that show where remaining enemies are now get clamped to the side of the screen. Not exactly my favorite change. On to the Miscanulous changes. 38 new stickers. Increase the range of sticker sounds by around 30 sets. This means that most can reach your friends now. Awesome. The lobby now changes colors depending on the real life season. We got a new fall lobby which looks hecking awesome. Good job Polly in this. There are fall colors everywhere. Damage dealt by you will always show an indicator now no matter how far you are from this target. Absolutely amazing change that I felt was needed and makes combat easier to track. There are also a lot of tracking changes which I found are really useful for all players of all skill levels. Added a number to the HP bar that represents your current health. I believe this change is great because again, easier tracking. Certain items are now seasonal, which means they can only be bought during the certain times of the year. For example, items marked in the shop box law book with an orange leaf are only available during September, October, and November. These items you gotta get fast, this was a great change. Makes players more excited and more weapons for us to collect. This makes weapon value more valuable and definitely increases player engagement to grind during that time. Lots of small fixes slash optimizations were made, from which they probably forgot to list there. Let's just call it side effect of 2020. Yeah, agreed. 2020 is a wild year. Next, our infection changes. There's a new map, Crimson Courtyard. Infected now gain permanent 5 plus damage. Let's go. This map is so good and I love it. Cast like theme and takes on the theme of red. A lot of people have already started to work on fan art for this. Survivors start properly with 25 bricks again. Healing gives it infected more bricks on average. Brick boxes have been added to the roof and spaces of the survivor towers. These can be opened with melee attacks or explosions and give 10 bricks every time. Oh, these are like Roblox toy boxes. They're very neat and give around 20 seconds. I don't want this to be abused, however. If Super Dune Star got toys, just take all my money. All of it. Afelza is added to each map to replace the old green team champerlines. These are plants that survivors have a hard time jumping on. If a survivor jumps on them, you'll get a funny jump. Don't remove some of the higher leaf platforms to prevent circle camping. This is a change requested by Dankers. Thank god it was really needed. Add in an area underneath the survivor's tower. Remove the ability to underneath the overhangs to build. 
updated the gravity effect on certain projectile tools to be less smuggy and more consistent. Slingshot was banned from tourneys because of this. Now that it's fixed, it'll probably be unbanned from sun. The chill status effect also negatively expects explosion jumps. Shadow Clip now is used 4 seconds, around 0.4 of them, before using after equipping. Good change. People would often quick shift. However, you're going to have a lot of players anger at the upcoming Shadow Clone changes, which in which they nerfed it quite a bit. Shadow Clone's brick cross lowered from 15 to 5. Shadow Clone now explodes when attacked by melee damage. Dealing 100% of the damage it was hit with, the Shadow Clone's reload speed buffs 8 seconds to 5 seconds. Shadow Clone's range slightly nerfed. Man, that is a lot of Shadow Clone changes, some good, some bad. Decrease the knockback on Rock Rockstar Special. A lot of Rockstar users may be sad at this change, but it was needed. You could knock someone entirely off the map with Rockstar. Vox Galibur's damage nerf has been changed to a lunge damage nerf. Vox users are infamous. Increased boomerangs reload time, increased trampolines trial re reload time to 6 seconds. Remote denominators reload time increased by 1 second. Remote denominator no longer causes knockback to enemies and is cat bottom jump. Paintball runs reload time increased by 1 second. Added 25% reload ragdoll time to greatsword. Greatsword box speed buffed to 25 to 30. Shadow Shuriken now takes us twice as long to charge when reload. Reduce Mega Smacks reload time to 2.25 seconds. Reduce Serves reload time to 2.5 seconds. Reduce Fire Slash Ice Waves reload time to 2.7 seconds. Dark Heart now steals 25% of the victim's max HP on KO instead of a flat 15. Reintroduce Self Burn for a Hawk's Hog. Scope Shot Blast Radius increased 40% to 30%. Fixed bombs not working with the home runner. Fixed being able to launch your teammates' bombs with your own explosions. What are your thoughts on this update overall? It was mostly a reskin update, but included brand new weapons such as Lava Ball and more. This spooky update, I think, had a lot of changes that were needed along with brand new things. However, I think some of the biggest changes were Shadow Clones nerfed and much more. Crystal and Star Blaster was also nerfed quite a bit, which is understandable. And yes, this is the S video for those who know. Thank you so much for watching my video. I'd appreciate it if you subscribe. These videos take me quite a long time. And I'll see you in the next video.